we launched um, a credit a license, which is My Mimada's mm-hmm. Fashion Week. That's how mm-hmm. My Mimada's Fashion Week is all about. And mm-hmm. uh, My Mimada's Fashion Week is very humble to say the first Mimada's Fashion Week in the United States. That's mm-hmm. how mm-hmm. everything starts. Yes. Mm-hmm. I know, I'm so sorry. It's a long, long introduction, but at least you know where I came from. So, but it's very exciting and I'm looking forward as an entrepreneur, it's a lot of room and I want to grow from there. And, you know, so that's why I'm here. Mm, That's really very interesting. I mean, um, it's so great to see homegrown talent making it big um, all over the world, wherever they go. And uh, it's really heartening um, as well because there are lots of obstacles, I think, um, within Malaysia, within the rest of the world, um, especially in the space of fashion, there's so many stereotypes um, that are fixed to fashion. Um, but just uh, just uh, out of curiosity, um, yeah. Inchip Faisal, Faisal, yeah. you were involved with the local Modest Fashion Week as well, and um, Norisham is also um, a little bit involved, or very much involved with the Modest, modest Fashion. Right. Wondering, um, from a global perspective um, right now, what is the buying trends um, around the world on fashion in general and modest fashion, I guess, a little bit there. And what are consumers actually looking for nowadays um, when it comes to fashion? Um, is less more or is more enough? I think now is a uh, modest fashion is a uh, modest fashion is a multi billion dollar business as we know, right? And mm-hmm. of course, like uh, during this uh, you know very challenging time, I think mm-hmm. the concept less is more apply to everyone, right? What do you think, Rosham? No, actually, it's it's very good. Uh, what you said uh, during pandemic is very interesting about. Um, you know, the fashion industry is, you know, some is actually challenging, some is growing like crazy. Um, I, I'm, I, I say on behalf of what I experienced over here, um, you know, some people pay a lot of money nowadays, um, mm-hmm. but a lot of money nowadays, and I'm not sure why, and, mm-hmm. you know, they think that something happened to them and they that, but I think the, the fashion changed a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot because um, depends with individual I believe some people buying because they want to sustain something that's why they use less like me I don't wear I don't buy a lot mm-hmm. uh, even though I'm into the fashion and I think that if I buy something something means to me because mm-hmm. otherwise um, and I want to buy something quality mm-hmm. you know so that's mm-hmm. the way I look at less mm-hmm. um, and some people especially in America um, mm-hmm. And awareness is so important. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they want to know where the clothing is made. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, especially the young generation right now, they are very outspoken. They're very really brilliant. They're very smart. So mm-hmm. they really, uh, they want to know, they, they, they make sure that whatever they wear is extended of their self. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. some people say less, you know, depends with the different area because I spoke to different country, mm-hmm. uh, cannot buy because I work with uh, the founder of Russia. I work mm-hmm. with the founder of Indonesia. Mm-hmm. Um, Indonesia right now, they are, they've been doing, fa- you know, fashion shows after fashion shows and while others country is like kind of, you know, so um, it depends, I think, di- different countries. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess it does. Um, so um, I guess people want to know where the clothes are coming from. If I hear you right, that's what yeah. is important to exactly. them. Yeah. And I think um, so in terms of co- uh, trends and stuff like that, people are a little bit more conscious about um, where the materials come from and how it's produced. Is, is yeah. that what you're saying? Definitely. It's very, especially in America, and you know, so I'm I'm not going to names, you know, because I don't want to get into the politic aspect itself. Mm-hmm. Very, for example, that fashion revolution is a mm-hmm. big deal, uh, mm-hmm. the big movement, 
Mm. And it, even I'm actually <clears throat> great. Um, I also mentoring a youth and women mothers group. Um, we, mm -hmm. I, I even asked them do some research. First thing, what they did, we want to focus on mm -hmm. fashion revolution because we care mm -hmm. about these people the other side of the world. And this is mm -hmm. a kid that I mentor, 14 years old. You know, mm -hmm. I do not want to do that because this thing they make from, I feel bad because you have to remember in America, mm -hmm. uh, they have second generation. For example, their parents from Pakistan, from Bangladesh, from all those, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, mm -hmm. fashion revolution started from that part of the world. So the second mm -hmm. generation is very, very keen. They want to know where's this, where that product's made. So and awareness, mm -hmm. all those are very important. Yeah. Um, how about how about Malaysia, Faisal? Do you see this trend also coming in Malaysia that people are more aware about where things are coming from and all that? Yeah, but uh, again, my main concern now is more more towards the independent designers, you know, during this uh, very challenging time, you know, mm -hmm. we, we talk about trends, everything, sometimes like uh, we need to ask ourselves, uh, is trend still valid, you know, <laughs> in yeah. a way, yeah, you know, in a way, because we are looking for something sustainable, you know, something that lasts longer, you know, yes. but then again, back to what I said just now, my main concern now is, as we know, the last few months have hit the entire fashion industry hard. Mm -hmm. Among those heavily affected are uh, independent designers. Do you think without yep. uh, without a finan financial safety net to rely on, many of them uh, face existential crisis. But but somehow there's also opportunities for fresh creativity and a new approach to business. You know, uh, yep. that's what uh, that's what uh, from what I heard with. Yep. Uh, uncertainty uh, prevailing trend, trend now, independent businesses uh, better off planning uh, realistically for what they can control. Yeah. Uh, do you think most of independent designers now, I think uh, uh, the young ones that I've known and mentored have had to pivot their business in recent months to minimize the impact of pandemic. Most of them now focus on sales, focus on the customers on, and on building uh, new business models because yeah. they are self <laughs> and independent company. They don't really think like what's to produce next. They just want to try to survive, you know? Yeah. Mm. yeah. I, I think, I, I think you're right. I, agree. <clears throat> I, I think I agree because um, uh, I think one thing this uh, pandemic has taught all of us and, uh, and uh, during the, especially the early days, nobody could go out. Yeah. In Past, you would see, you know, in Malaysia, we have, uh, we are blessed with plenty of sunshine. Right. People will jamo the kain outside. Yeah, they will hang their clothes out to dry. So yeah. you know exactly what they're wearing. And I think during the pandemic, uh, you walk around and the only thing that you see is our t-shirts and pajamas. Yeah, true. So <laughs> this is actually, um, this actually is very interesting. We just said, that's why I said that is, uh, is very um, tricky. If you're talking trend, you are right, uh, Faisal. Um, sometimes, you know, nowadays you're talking about trend is um, um, yes or no. But because of the pandemic and some business go down, some business jump like crazy. Yeah. Uh, Luna Lemon, uh, that's like the brand, their business jump like crazy because right. of people stay home. They want to be very comfortable. Now become a trend. You know, they right. were like, Things right. so that business jump. You are right. Independent business is actually like me. Even myself, um, I'm actually the producer. I'm actually the self. But um, I produce my own fashion week. So I actually come out. We had to come out with different ideas to make right. it very interesting. Otherwise, because right now um, we cannot. Most of designer cannot come. So we actually going to launch our second year. Um, fashion week by end of this year um, actually and we're looking forward to bring most of this uh, designers but virtually mm -hmm. so, yeah and and if I uh, can add uh, one more thing it's more about having a sustainable balance it means yeah. like, uh, taking into account people product and environment you know and mm -hmm. how can we balance this out and juggling everything to make this world 
a better place for everyone. You know, we need okay. to produce. Don't think we need to produce things that last and not disposable. You know, before this, we don't really think about that. But now, I think it's the right time to implement the upcycle, recycle concept and think about sustainable approach to everything. I think this is a way to invent things to make it fresher, new, and sustainable. Can I add I, into I, that? I, <clears throat> yes, go ahead, Nosham. No, go ahead. Yeah. That is so funny because I prepared the whole thing. Now we just like, you know, like, it's, it, this is good because we very more like brainstorm because I thought it's very, you know, very, you know, follow all those, but this is good. Now, like, we are everywhere. <laughs> yeah. But actually, it's very important that you just say about sustainable. That's another thing that I want to um, let everybody aware that uh, before the pandemic, uh, when because you have to remember, I came over to this country and I lived in this country for 31 years. So most of my life is, you know, you live in New York, right? Before yeah. and you know, live in New York, you were like black and white and I just no color. That's why you can see here. So what happened was when I start, when I went to uh, New York, when I saw the fashion week and I realized that uh, all these women's very, they are very authentic. Yeah. So that is actually, I actually, my background also, I'm into art. Art is so important to me. So the team, even during my fashion week, I talk about uh, batik the batik, the song kit is so important. But what I try to bring this year is actually called expand and preserve. And expand and preserve is so important because I give you an example, one of the designers um, that from Indonesia, I know I keep repeat her name. Um, this is the way how we can sustain, back to your question, right? Her name is Jenny uh, Tajwati. She's the founder of Indonesia Mother's Fashion Week. And when she came, um, she brought <clears throat> all her designers wearing song cat. I was like, oh my God. But the way how she presented, you have to remember, song cat long time ago, only the royal family can wear that, right? And then after that, the next step, when we get married, right? We're wearing the song cat, right? And then after that, the next step during Hari Raya. But nobody bring that to the mainstream. Right, and the mainstream probably in Asia, right, but not in the Western world. But for me, those is actually really wow me because when I saw that the way how she make it very trendy, very funky, that very really can relate to young generation, especially in Miami, we are we love to dress up. So those is actually not only we preserve and expand the designers is actually an ambassador. And we tell in the story. So, you know, thanks. So, and also, those is, that works a lot of work because I know Faisal, you're right. Because when I, when I <clears throat> um, uh, <clears throat> jump, sorry, jump into the modest fashion, the modest fashion designers have different, um, you know, they are, don't have the luxury with the financial. Okay, they are not the one can do mass produce. So the thing is, and also living in this country, I saw a lot of designers or you know, I don't want name dropping, go to the to Asia as well. Take the motive, take the ideas. And I don't blame them. We we as a Asia, the one have to keep it. We have to make it avant-garde, right? So for me is uh, from there I realized that. Um, the designer also can be, uh, can um, increase the price, you know, increase the price because they can tell the story. Take take them a long time just to do a certain amount of the song kit. Take about four months, right? The real one, yeah. you know. No, Shang, but, I'm gonna, I'm going to just uh, butt in a little bit. I do apologize. Yeah. I'm I'm just going to ask, building on what you said and what Faisal said, um, I'm just trying to balance it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, Faisal, just just out of um, just uh, wondering, you mentioned just now about the independent uh, designers, right, right. Thing, and Norsham has also mentioned that um, different designers have different ways on how they can actually take their signature, like for example, the song. Yeah. 
customizing yeah. it to right. cuffs and yeah. stuff like that. Right. What is your take um, on what um, Malaysian local designers, especially the independent designers, can do? That's question one. And another thing is that what do you think that the local industry players can actually do to come out? Um, because you use the word pivot and pivot we always use in business, but mm -hmm. we talk about pivoting in fashion. Mm -hmm. What is your take on how the local independent people can actually pivot during these trying times? Okay, for many designers in Malaysia, lockdown restrictions have helped foster in my opinion, creativity and prompt uh, to rethink how to run their businesses. Sometimes limitations and boundaries forces us you know, to think outside the box and reinvent the way uh, we do our business. Now, uh, I think these ideas of doing fashion shows, even not, uh, not on top of our mind, you know, what they want now is just to make sure that they survive this crisis, I, as I mentioned just now, you know, and, and these emerging designers, they need to rebuild their business first. You know, this is the moment of assessing the crisis and to come up with a new business module to rebuild. Uh, and all these uh, unfortunate em emerging designers, they need to take this moment uh, to uh, relook at things, you know, to self-reflect and rebuild their business. Most of all, most of all to think what's possible and be optimistic about it, you know, and to get help from like a anyone, you know, you know, anywhere, you know, in a way, yeah. And so just, just sort of curiosity, um, right now in Malaysia, yeah. uh -huh. we had, um, I think this is November now, we started uh -huh. the MCO in March, I think. Right, right, right. April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, right, right. Um, nine months. Right. Um, human terms, it's time to give birth to a baby. Wow. So yeah, that, that's how long we've been in lockdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Right. So um, what about these um, new designers and emerging designers mm -hmm. from ourselves? Because nine months is a pretty long time yeah. to be stuck at home, to mull over an idea. Do mm -hmm. you see anybody who is who has done something that we can actually be proud of um, from a fashion sense? And do you think that this lockdown is preparing them for innovation and change within the fashion industry um, that can actually set the next benchmark um, for the future? Because I don't think this COVID is ever going away anytime exactly. soon. And uh, what mm. can we do now to have changed a little bit to take the next step? No, show me. Wait. Uh, Faisal, Faisal. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, uh, in my opinion, you know, uh, most important thing is we need to address and produce clothes or product that people need right now. You know, we look at the landscape and look at the way that people dress right now. It's very, very easy, you know, easy, wearable and practical. You know, you look at streetwear. Streetwear has influenced fashion, you think. And then the word athleisure, came up, you know, as combination of, of athletic and leisure, you know, and then all these uh, elements, you know, we need to apply those, those elements applying, and then we try to apply it into our new rethink business module, you know, uh, applying multi-faceted business module to make sure that uh, this brand, the young brands, you know, is profitable and, and uh, sustainable and still free to do what they want, in my opinion, you know, okay. more or less. I'm going to ask a very uh, provoking and maybe controversial question to both of you. Um, in view of what has happened in the last one year, nine months, one year, is hot couture gone forever? Or is it just waiting in the wings to come back with a vengeance? Uh, I think not oh at God. this. Uh, 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 my opinion, uh, not at this moment, because like I think like everyone to everyone want to buy something that's easy, something is practical, something is wearable, something that they can live in, you know. And I think the concept of less is more applied to this this concept, you know. And because again, I mean, even if you have all those amazing dresses, you got no way to go. 
where? You know? That one I ask, I I agree with you, <laughs> but you know <laughs> that one I agree cannot go yeah, better. But, but still, but still, in this uh, challenging time, I think designers can dreams. You know, dreams like the most beautiful dresses, whatever. You know, maybe. Maybe for future, for future, you know, I don't know, you know, but but not at this moment. I don't think so. You know. what will it come back? It will, will it come definitely, back? definitely, definitely. You know, as long as designer, I mean, as long as you have designers, you have dresses. Yeah. How about you, Norsham? What is your take on this? Maybe not at this moment, but is it, is it like, you know, are the designers, you know, I have this impression in my mind because I'm not artistic and I know artistic people are always creative. Are you just waiting for it to come back so that here, here's my dress? Um, <clears throat> see, <clears throat> I'm going to answer this on behalf of the way here and also, you know, um, the way I look at it, the way um, I'm associated with somebody else, and also yeah. in Miami, I think depend uh, different countries and all that kind of things. Um, it's kind of sad because I think that you know America, we never really have lockdown technically. We still have a life. That's why it's for me to say this sometimes as kind of I I had to be careful. I, I try to be sensitive, yeah. but if you want to be honest, hot couture is always there. Yeah. And I, I'm my one of my close friends and actually a stylist, people buying the real hard couture, I'm talking like big money. Um, that's why I say I cannot see on behalf of somebody else. Yeah. You are right, they cannot go anywhere, but somehow, you know, we American, you live in New York, we are very innovative. And even is actually right now in Miami, they have they have event where we have in the bubbles, you know, everybody dress up. So, you know, they, because they want to leave, nobody can stop, you know, they still doing it. But yes, you know, um, it's not like last time everybody can just run. To be honest, the, 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 the store is still open, you know, still open, still buying. But the point I'm saying still, the hot couture depend, depends on different country and yeah. depends, yeah. So, there's a reason I'm I just that. Because the reason I, I say that because yeah. my partner, my yeah. partner um, Nora Sarawi, right. she is actually uh, designed a lot of hot couture. Right, right. Uh, still have you know yeah. because of believe it or not during um, during this time, sometimes people think hey, you know what this time for me to buy more because next time if after COVID probably gonna be like more expensive. Yeah. That's one, and then um, right now for some reason the e-commerce is booming. If you uh, study e-commerce uh, during the I even have the the numbers um, you know the 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 volume and the increase is crazy you know mm -hmm. that's why you know some people look into the pandemic has a crisis some look at that as opportunity mm -hmm. so true, it's up to us how to pivot like you said Navigate. how we, yeah. Yeah. yeah how are we going to see ourselves you know we right. have to think out of the box sometimes we have to like go around the box we had to figure out because the COVID's still here you know and i think that you know we the one have to whether work together collaboration is so yeah. important so that's part of me where um for me that's a lot during the um during this pandemic I have a few uh, license that I develop that give me a chance to develop a lot of license. So everybody have different way, you know, um, so uh, it's up to us, yeah. 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 Yes, yeah. Yes, yes. yes, yes. It's very niche market, you know, but like I think yeah. it's, I think it's Malaysia is more towards like more towards to the mass, you know, mm -hmm. in a way, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, Faisal, I'm very taken aback, uh, taken by what you said um, earlier on, a bit earlier on yeah. about sustainability and, yeah, yeah. and right. stuff like that. Um, you know, in Asia, we are dreadfully guilty of this. We go online, we see a t-shirt for $6.90, $9.90, fashionable t-shirt, thin t-shirt, and we say, oh, I have to have that. I'll wear it once, I'll throw it away. Right. What do you think is that going to happen? Because the wear and throw trend um, and I know in the US, you're talking about building to last. Mm. 
in Asia, we tend to be a little bit less concerned about the environment. Um, we like to use and throw. Everything is disposable. Do you think that this is something that is going to change, number one, in view of the pandemic? Number two, in view of the environment? Because I think um, there was a report somewhere that says that uh, fashion is one of the biggest polluters. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. so, um, so how what is your take on this before pandemic, current, during pandemic, and post pandemic? What do you think of this trend? I really think that uh, we just need to educate each other, you know, create that awareness of the importance of, you know, sustainability, you know, the importance of like giving quality products a chance, you know, as, I, as we mentioned just now, it's like we uh, buy something that is like uh, lasts longer, you know, so it's not disposable so that we can build upon it. You know, when you buy something new, we just build upon it, you know? And I think that's about it because like everybody must uh, play a role in this, you know, not just like a one, one time thingy or, you know, just like one person, uh, you know, fight, you know, everybody need to be educated regarding this matter, you know, yeah. Can, can, I, can yes. I add that? Of course, of course. It, you know, it's so in, uh, interesting because I really, really um, glad that we have a chance knowing that you are um, a professor and educator for Malaysia means a lot Absolutely. to me um, because the reason is for, you know, I really love the culture and I love the art. We, I love the batik and, and um, I, not to mention before, I forget. Uh, Rasta Rashid is yeah, actually right. a designer from Malaysia came right. over to my event. She actually brought something, uh, changing it, um, uh, change like from just regular uh, woman batik and then become wardrobe, become to, you know, like, uh, uh, what do you call this? Um, um, men's uh, jacket and all that kind of things. Now, back to you. So I really want you to really educate. You are the leader in Malaysia that to educate to the young generation. Um, another things too that I learned also from a Malaysian, uh, one of the Malaysian uh, girls said to me and she came over, do you know why the baju kurung uh, people keep wearing until now? I said, no, our national dress, right? Because baju kurung have a soul. I have no idea what she mean by that. And I said, what is she talking about? Then you know what? When you have a soul, you keep it. You keep it nice. You leave it for a long time, so you don't buy a lot. So from there, I'm learning and understand yeah. my own yeah. culture. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a, that is actually baju kurung is one of the subject that I talk in in Russia. Right. How right. important yeah. it is to sustain, yeah. keep our culture, transfer that to to the the, the clothing, like the way how mm -hmm. Rasta the batik transfer that, you know, and make it we appreciate. So yeah. we don't have to buy a lot, like right. five dollars, yeah. five dollars yeah. probably buy like the right. twenty thirty dollars, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. So that's my. Actually, thing. I, love, I I love the fact that Nor Sham says that uh, Faisal, you have such a huge responsibility on your shoulders nurturing the young yeah yeah definitely because the thing is most importantly is like you know we need to like how to say it to impart on our, our knowledge our experiences you know to 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 give them like a like a worldview kind of approach you know on things as Nosha mentioned just now authenticity is very important to be successful in this business right the first important thing is you got to know who you are you know, yeah. who you are, you know, who is your target customer. you got to have a very clear sense of your brand identity, you know, your brand signature is very important, your uniqueness. And again, as Nosha mentioned now, storytelling is very important. Yeah. Storytelling, people want to know that, people want to get to know you, you know. And then again, one more thing is you must have a unique point of difference in terms of your design. You must have that wow factor. Again, back to tradition, right? Tradition is very, very, you know, very strong, very identifiable, you know. We need that. That's why the Japanese designer, even, even though they do avant-garde designs, whatever, we can tell they're Japanese because their roots intact, you know. That's what I'm saying. Because again, as a young brand, right, even though if you like 
you reinterpret something that is from your culture, you know, you make it something contemporary or now, whatever, people still can like look at it and, yeah. and, and tell where it, it derived from, right? And then again, as I mentioned just now, every designer must have a voice. What is yeah. your take? What is your take of the state of the world now? You know, people want to hear your voice. You know, this is the right time for every emerging designers to let the, their voice roar, you know, so people can hear you. You know, what is your, yeah, what is your, what is your definition of fashion, you know, at this moment in time? Exactly. I, I love what's being said. I really love what's being said because it's so um, clear to me that both of you are so passionate about it, you know, and, you know, you guys are in, you guys are motivating me to probably look at my wardrobe a little bit more. But I just want to ask one question. Um, and maybe a little bit naughty, a little bit, you know. Um, right now, we look to Paris and London. And you're right, uh, Faisal, we look at Japan. We look at Korea. We look all over the world. Um, Norsham's given us an, uh, uh, an example of an Indonesian designer. but. Do you think that Malaysia maybe sometime would stand a chance to be a hub of the fashion industry in this region? Definitely. Yes. Definitely. Definitely. As long as you have that vision, you know, in a way, again, we must know our purpose. What is our purpose? You know, our purpose is to elevate our industry to the highest potential, right? And Kitabole, right? So again, with the right uh, networking, with the right people, with the right mindset, to me, anything is possible. You know, we have like uh, vast cultures, you know, traditions, heritage, whatever. That's that is like banyak yang untapped, you know. And then yeah. this is this is the right time to do it. You know, again, our mindset got to be big. You know, we must have that grandest vision of ourselves, and then we, you know, we work hard towards it. I think, I think uh, my, my take is like that, you know, yeah. How about you, Norsham? Do you think Malaysia stands a chance to go against the US and, the Euro and Europe and everyone else? Are you prepared what I'm going to say? Damn right. I'm very I am the leader on those. I am the first modest fashion week in the United States. And I am, you know why I'm very brave to say that? Because Malaysia, Malaysia is the leader of Modest Fashion Week in the world consistently. You know, if you go to the global um, Islam uh, halal uh, report, two years in a row, we are on the top. Um, you know, Modest Fashions, uh, we not only Modest Fashions, Hala Cosmetic, um, FinTech, all those, we have those. We have DNA, we have the blood. If I, the reason why I'm become so strong and I so gutsy to say it, because Malaysia have everything to offer. And I believe Faisal have to change the, the narrative that to all the Malaysian, especially I don't mean uh, Malaysian, that we can do it because our DNA, the batik, the songket, it's ours, yeah. you know? Yeah. That's one, if you're talking about the technology, do you know that Malaysia, Indonesia, and Singapore is the leader of digital right now? And especially, I think that Kari Yang Berhormat, Kari Jamaluddin is the, the Minister of um, Science and Technology, right? So yes. I hope he actually can help help the young generation, help Faisal and most of the Malaysian government agency to open their eyes because everybody in the creative creative industry, they are the real ambassador. Yeah, you're right. Believe or not, the, you know why I can speak up? Because we have DNA. We, Malaysia have every single thing, even though I live in America, but I speak this on behalf as a Malaysian and I, you can use, we can collaborate. That's why it's so important to work to each other. And collaboration is so important for me. Build relationships important to me. Because for me right now, how I can manage 
to work with somebody else all about relationship. Um, you know, we have to be a relationship. We also have a bigger dream, like you said. You know, we have to make, if you dream small, that's what you got. I came over from small village of Malaysia, in Negris Milan. And oh, yeah. my father is a rubber tapper. I'm a self-taught entrepreneur. I'm a college dropout. I funded my own fashion week, which is make a history in America. If I can be doing it my own with nobody help, when people, the good part is entrepreneurship, global entrepreneurship, right? The sad part is a lot of people say, I'm entrepreneur, I do this. By the time come, the government don't give money. Ah, oh, I cannot do this, can it, yeah. There's no entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is you have to figure out. You change them. If not working this way, turn around. If not working this way, turn around. Sometimes you have to work. You don't get the money, but you build relationship. But that is how that works. Malaysia is going to be the hub. I make sure that I work very hard on those. That's what my think. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm just uh, curious, you know, um, you guys are really successful um, in everything that you do, and you are the leaders in fashion um, here, and you're so much respected. Um, from both of you, I mean, before we come to an end, I would just like to ask uh, you both, and maybe we'll go with Norsham, because I think, Faisal, you have a bigger uh, responsibility on your shoulders for this question. So, wow. <laughs> okay, but I'll ask, um, what kind of advice or recommendation would you give the budding designers, the youth of today in Malaysia who want to actually venture into the fashion industry, number one, and who actually want to make a mark in fashion and entrepreneurship in Malaysia and the world. Norsha, maybe we'll go with you first and before we go to Faisal, is that okay? Sure, sure. First of all, like I said, it's Malaysia have a lot of good fashion designers or globally. You know that Jimmy Choo, Zhang Toy, uh, Farah Khan itself, um, influencer, it, believe it or not, a lot of influencer and what people never realize, Malaysia is the biggest with a lot of live stream and um, um, there's two um, uh, influencers that making big name and even big, big fashion house actually uh, sent a lot of collection to her. Um, uh, Nolofa, is that right? I forget the yes. two person names. Yes. So, yes. Back to your question, there's a lot of big names are there. But the most important part is, back to your question, is for the young, young um, designers out there, um, do your homework and believe, you have to believe, you have to believe, you have to believe, you have to believe, you know, and um, do your homework. Um, don't be scared to try. Don't be scared. It's okay to fail. I flung a thousand times. And, but the thing is, I still keep going. And it, especially right now, COVID, you know, and, and is, is that going to stop me? No. So the point I'm saying is, there's a lot of opportunities. Malaysia have a lot, a lot of to offer and use that, um, and I use that, and we have those, um, you know, in us, you know, with us. So the technology, the, you know, the, you know, the, the art itself and everything's there. And I think the government right now, uh, I think the government uh, of Malaysia is trying to make the Malaysia as the Asian digital uh, leaders in Asia. Yes. And I think that's, you know, that's how, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Nursham. How about you, Faisal? What, what words of advice or recommendations do you have? Okay, first and foremost, I mean, all these uh, young designers, they must be authentic, you know, stay true to, to themselves, you know, you know, they got to know their roots. That's the most important thing, you know, and then in a way, as I mentioned just now, if you, if you have a brand or you just, uh, you're just starting a brand or a label, most importantly is you must have a clear brand identity. You know, you must have that, that signature, you know, that, that is authentic. 
and then it's like relevant. And then again, storytelling is very important. And, and now your, your product must have that wow factor, you know, in a way. And then again, uh, uh, in the business part of it, blah. and then yang paling penting adalah you've got to plan down is the key. Try to keep expenses really down, you know, and, and then have an honest conversation with partners, retailers, and related people about the possibilities on how to move forward and to survive this crisis. And then one more thing is, as we all know, e-commerce platform is very important. So strengthen your strength on that. And then try to plan out five to, uh, your, uh, to 10 years plan, you know, and then, uh, and then your business plan should be uh, uh, stay dynamic and agile. And then uh, you got to understand and think about the profit margin and the cost involved. You know, again, we, we say this again and again, think outside the box, explore ideas and possibilities. And again, uh, at the end of the day, you got to find creative solution for everything. You know, focus on solution, not the problem, you know. Yeah, exactly. Usually, yeah, usually the solution is in the problem, you know. I, I love what you guys have just said. Um, because, you know, there's a stereotype about fashion designers and artists that they are only creative, but they are not entrepreneurial. And I'm so, so thrilled that I've actually met two awesome designers who are molding people to be entrepreneurial in spite of being artistic. And this for me is like mind blown. It's amazing. And I really, really enjoyed this conversation. You have completely killed all the stereotypes I ever had about fashion. Oh, you're too kind. I <laughs> know, right? Too kind. <laughs> but I'm not designer. I just want you know I'm not designer. Yeah. But I'm yeah. A guru myself, you know. <laughs> Again, Sonia, I really think that now is the time for yeah, individuality, about self-expression. Yeah. About self-expression, you know. That's the most important thing. You know, it doesn't matter where you are, how you look like, everyone is beautiful. Everyone has the potential, you know. So, so even Faisal, just a question, a personal question. Even though my wardrobe is 80% black, it's okay? Yeah, it's very okay. That's you. Yeah, that's your branding. People know, you know. Accessories. Just put the accessories because I used to be... I, I told you earlier, and I live in New York. I mean, uh, I know. always because navy, black and white, you know. That's my color. I was yeah, a former banker. Yeah. So what you can do, you just play around with, you know, jewelry. Yeah. Play around yeah. with colors and things like that, you know. So that's it. Yeah, yeah. just be confident. Be you. Yeah. You guys, you guys are amazing. I really love you guys. And I can't wait to meet up both of you in person. You. Thank you. And Thank you, know, you. you guys are amazing. You are too kind. Thank you. Amazing. And you, okay, before we sign off, we 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 were told that we had less than an hour, and I think we've almost uh, hit that. Any last parting words from both of you before we sign off? Sure. Oh. Go ahead, Faisal. Ah, uh, okay. Just always trust your instinct, trust your vision. You know. You know, keep believing in what matters most, you know, in your, in your life. Life is short. Life is fragile, you know. Live for the moment, you know, and make the best out of it. Exactly, exactly. And notion for you? Okay, actually, I want to take this opportunity uh, to let everybody know that uh, we are going to do a, our second year, um, you know, uh, Fashion Week, my, my Mother's Fashion Week, virtually by end of this year. And we are going to add something that very interesting uh, into um, the event. Like you said earlier, Faisal, uh, what we try to do about uh, the Mother's Fashion Week itself uh, compared to other fashion week, we want to have uh, intellectual fashion. Um, so we want to make sure people come and understand and appreciate and love it. And we want them to stay with us forever and ever because modest fashion, talking as a Muslim, Muslim is 1.8 billion uh, you know, population in the world. Modest fashion is growing, it's multicultural, cross-border, um, and you know, it's so black, it's fun. And also every each country is very different, very authentic. 
I really, really it's so for me is so exciting. Even though it's challenging, but you know, you is very still exciting for me. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. Okay. Thank you so much to Norsham and Faisal. Thank you, so thank you for having us. I thank am you. so thank thrilled you. to have met you. I thank you so much, Norsham. I know the time difference is probably I don't want to know. Um, In the morning. <laughs> okay, then you're fine. Uh, morning yes. is fine. And Faisal, I know it's raining and it's dark I, and gloomy tonight. Yeah, with thunder and lightning yeah. even here. Yeah. Come, so, come you know, to Miami, Faisal. Next time, come to Miami. Inshallah. Yeah. Yes, Inshallah. God willing. Yes. Good to God see willing. everyone. Good to see everyone here. Okay. So thank, thank you, you so much for taking the time to spend with us. I really appreciate it. You guys are amazing, so inspiring to me. Um, thank you so much for being a part of Global Entrepreneurship Week Malaysia. Um, I really wish you all the best. Um, please take care of yourself. Stay safe. You too. Good you too. night. Thank all you. Right. Bye. Thank yeah, you. Bye. Bye. Bye.